Hey everyone, this is Ross, and in today's video, I'm so excited because we are picking so many peaches off of my Red Haven peach here. I want to talk about kind of how we got these peaches, um, all the different things that kind of went into this crazy harvest that we're getting this year. Um, you know, how the peach trees are doing, how we've trained them, uh, how we protect them, and then also how we're picking them. It's pretty simple, is that what I'm looking for on these peaches is that we can just very simply come in here and look at the, the back side of the peach. Is this completely yellow or is there some green here? If there's some green, you may not want to pick it. You may want to wait. And I think that's really the key. This is more of a paler yellow. We're looking for maybe an orange on the back side or a darker yellow color. If it's green at any point here, it's probably not a good idea to pick them. And if we can wait super long, if we can wait really long for these peaches to actually soften up on the tree, I mean, that's ideal. And I think that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing here because I've already got a whole basket full of these things, but to be honest with you, I already have like four of these and there's still tons of peaches on the tree. So I'm not really in any rush to pick these, but I am sort of worried <laughs> that something is gonna get them, something's gonna to happen to these. So I've been very cautious. I think what happened last year, and the reason why we have a scarecrow now, we have Ginzi here, is that we've had crazy catbirds uh, that have kind of, you know, colonized the area, colonized the backyard here. And they're a really vicious bird that last year what had happened was my Red Haven, which is the earlier peach, had ripened up it hadn't finished and then the catbirds came in and just decimated the whole tree and then soon afterwards the alberta peach right next to it which really hadn't ripened any peaches at this point they were kind of still looking like this um, they went after those as well and the catbirds just went crazy and it kind of left a scar on my memory here i've kind of have post-traumatic peach disorder and take you guys over here because you can see that what the catbirds do is they actually will take an entire peach off the tree, eat it all up, and then leave the pits for me in random places throughout the yard. That's not a, at least I don't think that's one of the rabbits or one of the squirrels because we're also dealing with right now a squirrel that comes up on this fence and crawls across and then gets himself on some of these branches and starts gnawing away. And there's also a rabbit that comes in here and gets some of the peaches that have fallen and starts eating those. Um, and you can see there's some pits on here. You know, so there's a lot of pits. There's a lot of fallen peaches. We've been trying to pick up as many as we can. What I could do if I don't want to see this rabbit here anymore is spray some liquid fence that helps with deer, it helps with rabbits. The squirrel, I don't think I can really do a whole lot about unless I got something else that I don't currently have. Ginzi here, the scarecrow, we did a video on Ginzi, by the way. He is a child heirloom that my grandparents used to put out every Halloween and try to scare us. And we've had him now in our basement in a box for a long time. I figured he'd be a really good idea to put him up to help keep the birds away. And I think so far, I haven't seen many cat birds this year but I think he's doing a wonderful job of keeping these birds away for the most part. I've seen minimal amounts of pecking on the fruits since we have put Ginzi up. It's mostly been the squirrel that's been coming around the fence here and getting them. The rabbit's just kind of getting the scraps. So, you know, for the most part, these are really, really being well protected. I'm not really having to do a whole lot of work here to keep these fruits, um, you know, in pristine condition. But I am worried, like I've said. So I've been trying to pick as many as I can, especially if they are getting soft, like this one kind of has, I guess maybe some kind of bruise right here. It even has maybe a little bit of black spot. Some of these guys have a little bit of this spotting on them, which is mostly cosmetic, nothing really to worry about, but I think it is in some way potentially deteriorating the fruit uh, very slightly. Some other issues that we've had in the past is plum cacurlio. And I think now that my trees have really well adjusted, well adapted to this climate, 
The plum cacurleo is not really attacking these particular peaches. I have other peaches in the yard that seem to be more susceptible. I have some in the front that are younger that haven't adapted it nearly as well. I have one over there and the plum cacurleo seem to attack those more because they were weaker trees, not as well adapted. Um, now, if there was any plum cacurleo damage, I was really made sure that I picked up a lot of those fruits that have fallen. In fact, a lot of the fruits that had fallen, I made sure that I picked those up, put them in a bucket and disposed of them. I do not want plum cacurleo to become more of an issue than it already is. Um, so plum cacurleo has been a thing. The other big thing that we don't even really, I guess it's so far away in our minds at this point, but I'm very close to really not getting a single peach every year. And it's kind of like, I would say maybe one out of three years, at least from my experiences so far and others in the area, is that out of one out of every three or maybe one out of every five years, I'm not gonna get any peaches because of a potential late frost. And we worry about this, we cross our fingers every spring because inevitably these trees here, in the direction that the sun is at that time of the year in the early spring in like march and april the sun comes in really hot in this particular location and warms up that soil really quickly so it's better i would say you know because this is more of the south or western side whereas if we had our trees on the northern side of the house that would probably happen a lot less likely year after year so it's a big tip that we constantly overlook when planting out our stone fruits is that they really do wake up way too soon. The cherries, the apricots, the plums, it really is a bit of a gamble of having these things and not having them. So um, those are really the big things that I've had to deal with. The moisture here is also, or could be potentially a big issue with you. And that's how you're gonna get the spotting, I think, is really with excess moisture, as well as uh, peach leaf curl. We did have some peach leaf curl on my Alberta peach, but just completely gone away. I took off some of the leaves that I saw that had the infection, and then that was it. It was, it was done. And I think it had a lot to do with, well, actually, you can see right up in here, here is some peach leaf curl, it looks like, or potentially maybe there's some sort of insect on here. So I'm not entirely sure what we're gonna do with that. Is it really gonna be something to worry about? I don't think so because the way that these trees are trained and that's what I wanna get into next is that they're really open. There's a lot of airflow in here. Having an espalier tree I think really works out well and it's really difficult to kind of tell, especially with Ginzi in the way here, but you can kind of see the main trunk coming up this way and it's actually tilting quite a bit to the left because what had happened is that there's so much fruit set on this side of the tree that it's actually leaning the trunk over, which is not good. It has a lot to do with my pruning that I did last year. But let me get into this, the training right now, is that it comes up as a single stem here and then branches off along these wires. And you can see there's a, three tiers. There's one at the bottom, one in the middle, and then one at the top. The one at the top has really vigorous shoots because that's how trees work is that the higher points in the tree get more of that growth. So you can see they've really taken off from that point. And that's how I'm really gonna control the height of these trees is to control this. So what I'm gonna do next year, a lot of these really tall shoots are gonna be out of here. They're not even gonna exist. Any three-year-old wood is gone. So as an example, this is a three-year-old branch at the end of this year this will be gone and all these fruiting branches with it will also be gone it's a pretty productive branching system there but what is eventually replacing it is this as an example this could be a i think this is a two-year-old shoot right now so first year it grew quite vigorously and then now it put out these new shoots and now it's being forced downwards and is now a two-year-old shoot next year well, maybe not even next year because it's growing downwards. I like the position of this. But at some point, we have to remove a lot of these upwards growing shoots that are three to four years old. If they get more older than that, we're really going to turn off the balance of this tree. Here's another shoot right here that's going to be three years old. So it's really important to, I think, with this particular system, 
it's easier to renew that wood, renew that fruiting wood every year. It also, I think, has really good um, branching that comes in here, really good airflow that comes in here. So I don't really have to worry about the excess humidity that is in my area. I think these trees do exceptionally well. Also, they get hit with some morning sun in that direction over there. And then they're also getting hit with sun pretty much all day from, you know, here's the south and then also in the west side, even though, you know, we're late in the evening now, it's getting over top of the house there. Um, so for the most part, these trees are in a really good position other than the fact that there is a potential for a late frost. So I think that's mostly what I wanted to cover here is pruning and training and harvesting. You can see these peaches. I mean, they're just gorgeous. Um, I've got myself a ladder here to see if I can get up on the top, but it's not something I want to do. I would rather keep these lower shoots, these lower branching systems here that are actually more productive and have been more productive. I've harvested quite a bit off of these lower shoots because these shoots are growing horizontally or even downwards rather than these shoots that are growing completely straight up. You can see as the tree gets taller, there's less fruit up, in the top, up, at, up at the top here. And that has a lot to do with how a peach fruits, but also it has a lot to do with just because more vigor is going to have less fruit. So we want to have less vigor by bending these shoots downwards if possible, or having shoots that are at a lower point of the tree. This is going to have more productivity in here. So I'm keeping a lot of this for next year. It's also easier to protect, et cetera, et cetera. And I think, you know, that's mostly what, again, what I wanted to, ch to chat with you guys about. Um, yeah, so again, I just wanna touch on this one last thing is that I'm coming in here again, and I'm looking at these, and I'm seeing, all right, is that any green on here? If it is, I'm gonna let it hang for a bit. I am in no rush. I Again, I have four of these, but I wanna make sure that I'm giving some of these peaches to friends and neighbors and people like that we can even can some of them. We can uh, make preserves. I mean, we could do a whole lot of different things with these peaches, but if I have four buckets like this, four baskets like this, I'm, I can't keep up with it. I've already eaten three peaches today and I probably got to eat maybe three more, but um, that's a lot of peaches in one day. So, um, you know, I think the ideal scenario, and I did mention this, I want to say it again, is that if we can get these peaches to soften up on the tree so that when you, you really touch this and it really becomes sort of depressed, you can really get in there. That is the time to eat it right off the tree. That is the most perfect time because when we get these from the store, they're picked almost at the point that I'm picking them. Maybe a little earlier, maybe a little bit later than the point at which I'm picking them. And the longer they hang on the tree, the tastier they're gonna be. They're gonna have more sugar. We don't need to pick them earlier. We don't need to ship them all the way across the country. This is the key, and this is why we're doing this. So again, I know that I'm doing this early and this against a lot of what I believe, but that, <laughs> that post-traumatic uh, peach disorder, guys. <laughs> So I'm going to finish picking now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a number of these on here so I can come in here at later portions and really get these peaches at a perfect point. I'm going to see some friends on Friday. So that way I can give them these guys. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you all soon. I really believe you guys should grow some peaches. Out of all the stone fruits so far, these are the earlier to fruit the earliest of fruit, also the most heavy fruiters, and the easier to grow, I think, than all the other stone fruits that I've been growing. So yeah, check it out. And I uh, hope to see you guys soon. If you enjoyed this one, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and share this video. Somebody you know who likes to grow peaches or you wanna show them this harvest, sh yeah, share the video. Also, please subscribe, and we'll see you all for tomorrow's video. Take care, guys. We'll catch you soon. Ross out.